Hi guys, my name is Rob King and I'm the lead coach at Medial Health Strength and Conditioning. Medial Health uh, was opened as a clinic three years ago with the primary focus being on physical development and redevelopment to achieve injury prevention and athletic enhancement. Through the clinic, we've been incredibly fortunate to work across a number of different populations, including athletes, including youth, paediatrics, and also disability populations, where we are incredibly fortunate to be a referral clinic for Great Ormond Street and a Corbill Children's Charity, along with local hospitals in Essex, where we work with musculoskeletal and neurology patients. My job with you all uh, today and in the oncoming weeks is to provide you with an entire new skill set that at its core is incredibly simple and easy to achieve, but coupled with the sessions and the work that's been programmed by the other professionals who you'll meet later in the week, will give you the physical and physiological attributes and tools to allow you to excel in your own physical literacy. What I'm going to do with you today is something incredibly simple where we're going to be looking at ground-based foot loading points and hopefully through the session can increase our skill level and look at how we can couple that with basic movements, even if it's standing, sitting, stepping, and hopefully through the weeks to come, get you moving in bigger and grander movements. So the first thing we're going to be looking at is what our feet are doing. Now, for me personally, my biggest goal is to educate you guys so you can really, really start differentiating between what's right and what is wrong. Once we're able to do this, you've then got the ability to understand what should feel right. And if it doesn't quite feel as it should, you've got the tools there to be able to change that. And that's how we get that longevity to our practice. So I'm going to pop the camera down to my feet and we'll start off straight away. Okay guys, so the first thing we're going to be looking at is going to be our toes. Our toes are incredibly important, okay? They're not just there for balancing, they can also dictate a loading point when it comes to us applying any force down to the floor, especially when we're standing from a seated position, whether it be from a chair or a couch like mine I'm on now, or if we're doing movements like a squat, a split squat, a lunge, anything like that, that during these weeks, we will hopefully get you performing. The biggest thing I look for, first of all, is when we are pressing down against the floor and standing up, that our knee, our hip, and our ankle stay in a strong line. What we don't want to do is allow our knee to collapse in. That's called a valgus knee movement, or we don't want it to massively fall out. Because then what it does is it creates a gap in between your toe and the floor and can change your entire loading and movement pattern. So what we're going to do today is make sure, the first thing, if you've got if you've got a phone and you can do some video feedback, that'll be brilliant. If not, somebody you're with might be able to do it. Or if you've got a mirror, you can have a look yourself. So I wanna make sure that my toes are all in contact with the floor. And the first thing I'm going to do is without sliding my foot forward or without my knee collapsing into this valgus or various position, I'm just going to push directly down to the floor. You can see, if you watch my hips now, you can see them slightly change position here. And I'm just looking to push vertically down against the floor. What I want you to really, really know and really, really notice is what part of the foot, and if I face this way, either heel, mid or front foot, which part of the foot becomes very dominant during that driving position. So again, I'm pushing straight down, trying to let my foot slide forward, push vertically down, and understand which part of my foot becomes very, very active. Hopefully you've done that a couple of times now on each side and gained a real good understanding of as you're pressing into the floor, which part of your foot, either front foot, mid foot, or back foot, becomes really active as you're driving vertically through the ground. Obviously, this application of force is going to massively transfer into movements such as standing, or squatting, split squatting, lunging, as I said right at the start of the video, that hopefully we're gonna get you guys doing 
later on through the days and weeks of your exercise programs. What we're going to do now is we are now going to find a way to really identify this mid part of our foot. It's the strongest part of our foot, but more often than not, we tend to load to the front foot as everything we do in day to day life loads towards the front. What we're going to do now is we're just going to push down into the floor really hard. But before, as we do that, we're going to scrunch or grip our toes. Now, you can put a towel underneath your toes and you can practice pulling that towel into the center of your foot. This is called articulating the floor. And it's a really good way of initially firing up any kind of proprioceptive feedback we can get from the floor. As I grip in, I'm gonna maintain that grip and I'm gonna push down as hard as I can through the floor. Now, if you watch the cushion, you can see it release and that is a very good sign as it shows that my hamstring and my glutes are becoming very active, which are the main muscle groups needed in order for us to stand and squat and move efficiently. If you can feel it more through your knee and your quad, you're probably driving still a little bit too much through your front foot and you just need to grip and focus that downward force through the midfoot a little bit more. So if you watch me now, I'm going to grip. I'm going to push as hard as I can into the floor. Grip, pushing down into the floor. Grip, pushing down into the floor. Hopefully you've given that a few attempts on each foot. If you haven't, you can still do that while we're going through this next part of the video. What we're now going to do is we're going to include those two skills we've just done. So a basic grip and a push. But now what we're going to try and do is ensure that our knee, as we're pushing down, doesn't cave in or flare out away from the nice straight line we've got from ankle knee and hip. What we're going to make sure we do to really, really keep this mechanism strong is grip, push down. But as I do that, I want to make sure that this foot doesn't start turning out or in because it can sometimes happen. Okay, guys, as you can see, and I apologize if you're not a fan of feet, I've got my foot out for you now. So this is what we're going to do. We are going to couple the two skills that we've just learned. So the grip and the drive down. And again, you can see my how active my hips become as I drive into the floor. I'm now going to make sure that as I drive, my knee stays as strong as possible, as well as my hip and as well as my ankle, because these three joints will always work together. What I'm going to do is I've got a basic 10p piece and I'm going to pop that under my big toe. What I'm going to try and do with that big toe is push that 10 p through the floor. And you can see as I do that, my knee caves in. Now, if I was to keep that in that position, it will be an unsafe position for me to stand up with as my hips have now become relatively underactive. So now what I'm going to do is as I've pressed into that 10 p piece under my big toe, I'm now going to keep pressing, but I'm going to bring my knee out and the weight is completely over all five of my toes. However, with that big toe still pressing in. So we're going to practice that again. So 10p piece goes under the big toe. And as I press that 10p piece in, you can see the knee really fold in. And I want to try and avoid that as much as possible. So all I'm then going to do is by using my toes as well as my hip, bring the knee back out and you can see the big toe hasn't released off of that 10p so if i release press the big toe in use my hip and use my other four toes to bring the weight back across to all toes release press the big toe into the 10p piece use the hip use the rest of my toes spread across and what i should feel like i'm doing is trying to tear the carpet between my feet. So watch again, I've released, pressed in, and I'm gonna tear the carpet, press, tear the carpet. And that way I know that everything is as active as it can possibly be. Okay, so the final piece 
of the puzzle today is I've still got my 10 PPs. That's gonna go under my big toe. Again, everything will stay the same. I'm gonna press down. I'm gonna rip that carpet away. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add in the final piece, which is a big drive through the floor and release. Press the big toe in. Rip the carpet, push through the floor. One more. Press the big toe in. Rip the carpet and push. Hopefully you found those small skills really, really manageable. What I'd like you to do is create your own, what I like to call competency checklist. So if you found the first thing really easy, but the second skill a little bit more difficult, don't move on to the third skill until you feel like you've really, really nailed down that second skill. The idea is to make sure that all these minor skills are exactly how we need them to be. So there's a big transference to the bigger movements that the guys are gonna be taking you through during the week. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you've learned something and I hope you can start utilizing those skills in your everyday lives. Thank you so much and I'll see you next week.